Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 18.4 beta one has been out for a couple days at this point, and there's many more new features to talk about since the iOS 18.4 beta one is out. What's new video. I also thought it was too early to talk about the overall experience. So I covered iOS 18.3.1 the other day since it's been out a couple weeks, but I've been using this full time on my 16 pro max and iPad pro, and you've been using it as well. And many of you commented on the YouTube community poll where at the time of this video, there's over 10,000 votes and 100. 140 comments. I've gone through all the comments to see what it's like so far. I do expect it to improve, but be sure to stick around toward the end of the video where we'll go over some of your comments as well. Now, the first thing you need to know before we talk about new features is Apple unsigned the update for a few devices. For example, if you have an iPhone 12 pro or 12 pro max, as well as an iPhone 12 mini, the update will no longer install. So unless you installed it right when it came out, you won't have the ability to install this just yet as it seems there's some issues. The same is true for other devices I've listed here with the iPad 8 cellular and others, as well as watch OS 11.4 beta one on some of the updated Apple watches. So Apple watch series six, it seems, but none of the others. So it's just very odd that Apple did that. Now, as far as new features, the first thing has to do with podcasts. If we go into podcasts, go to our account in the upper right, you can see there's a couple new options on the right with 18.4 beta one with podcast settings and notification settings. However, if I tap on them, they don't seem to do anything for me at this time. So let me know if you're actually getting into menus or going to notifications for them. They're just not doing anything at all for me. And so you'll see here, if I tap on these, they don't do anything at all. If we go home, there's some updates as well to the widgets for podcasts. So maybe we go to add a podcast widget, press and hold, go to edit, add a widget, go down to podcasts within podcasts. We have two new styles. So let me find it here. There we go. And under podcasts, we have new widgets for shows and library. So you'll see there's some new ones for library as well as shows play episodes from a show you follow. Now, if you're using Apple CarPlay, some people are now showing three rows of icons instead of just two. Now I'm not seeing this myself in my car, but let me know if you're seeing it where there's three different rows of distinct icons and let me know what car it is, whether it's an aftermarket head unit, such as an Alpine or Pioneer, or maybe it's a Toyota or a Honda or something else. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Now with this update, we got an all new ambient music option or ambient sounds option with four different icons. If we press and hold and then go into each one individually, you'll see it says productivity. We have individual options for each one. So binaural frequencies, pure focus, classical concentration, or from your library, along with beats instrumental. The same is true for each one of these. So for example, well-being, we have some here. And then if we go under this one where we have chill, we have piano chill, ambient chill, lo-fi jazz, pure chill, and from library. So some great options here if we want to go into those and I mistakenly removed sleep, but let's go ahead and go into that. And we have some additional ones here. Of course, you can make these icons larger as well if you want to do that. And I actually use these while I was editing a video the other day, and they provide a really good background sound while you're editing just for something to fill the noise. So that's great. And they seem to be much better than I would have expected. They work well, and I really wish there was a separate app, but either way, this will work for now. When it comes to the video player, well, they've updated that a little bit. So let me go into a video. So here's the video player. Let me turn it down. We have a new animation when we jump ahead. So we've got this nice new animation to jump ahead or jump back and it looks pretty great. So some slight changes here, nothing crazy, but something that we have updated. If you're using the passwords app, they updated this on Mac OS 15.4 as well. But if we go into passwords, unlock it. And if you're using verification codes in the passwords app itself, you now can set a timer. So there can be a timer for the verification code and that's something that's completely new. So if you want to add that you can, and it will have a timer now for the options. So that's something that's great. We didn't have before. If we go into shortcuts, we've got a couple new things here under actions. We have a new action for opening a message conversation, and we also have one to send a message. So you'll see that here where we can send a message if we'd like as an output. So those are some updated shortcuts within settings under our camera control options on the iPhone 16 models, we have a new option for camera app. So if we go into that here, you can see the camera app we can select from and you can pick for any that you actually have. So instead of just having a separate section below, it has its own dedicated section now. 
With notifications, the overall animation is much smoother this time around. Let me show you on the iPad. We have the same version on the iPad, iPad OS 18.4 beta one. You'll see the overall animation is super smooth. And then we have a line here if we have quite a few of them. So we have it numbered here. And then if we go into it, you can see Apple news sports. And then again, just super smooth overall. And then we can clear them all here as well. Now, if I place a phone call, many people are seeing the privacy dot that shows up here, move outside the dynamic dynamic island. You'll see it moved, but depending on what I'm doing, it moves back and forth. So this is a bit of a bug, I believe, but many people are seeing it outside the dynamic island or inside it. Sometimes it jumps back and forth. Within settings, if we go down to Apple Intelligence or Siri, or just Siri, if you don't have a device with Apple Intelligence, go to your voice, go to Australian. There's two new options here. So we have four options total now, and there's two new ones. So let me go ahead and play those quickly. So with the setting sun. The colors of the sky fade with the setting sun. The colors of the sky fade with the setting sun. The colors of the sky fade with the setting sun. If we go into another app, maybe podcasts and go to type to Siri, it gives relevant information or suggestions based on the context of the app you're in. So again, if we do the same thing, go into music and thanks to Parker Ortolani for letting me know about this, but you'll see what can I do in music? Play the productivity playlist, play my discovery station. So again, it's app aware and giving suggestions based on that. Again, if we go into settings, you'll see what can I do in settings? So it changes based on what you're in back within settings. If we go under maps and if you have multiple languages set, you'll have a new option here for preferred language under maps. So you can change it to whatever you have set or something entirely different within the control center under do not disturb for the focus mode. You'll see, we have two arrows here. Now it lets us know there's more options. We can reduce interruptions and more, but it's just a slight visual change again, back in settings. If we scroll down to where we have face ID and passcode, go into that, put in our passcode. If we scroll down on the left, you'll see the older version where we have reset face ID. It's no longer as easy to do that on 18.4 beta one. It says face ID is required while stolen device protection is turned on. The same is true if we scroll down to where it says turn passcode off so you can change it, but you can't turn it off with stolen device protection turned on within the home app. We now have support for robot vacuums. So if you have a robot vacuum, this is something we thought we'd have earlier on, but we'll be able to add that as an exception accessory very soon within settings under photos within photos. If we scroll down, we have a new option to show recently viewed and shared. It says the recently viewed and recently shared album will appear under utilities. So if you have that enabled, they should show up there. If we go into photos, I have a new message here that goes along with that, that says no shared library suggestions available. Suggestions will appear in the profile view when more photos and videos are added to the library. And also under albums, there's a new option within albums. If we go into the upper right in the three dot menu, we now have a list view. So we have key photo in a new list view. If you utilize back tap on the phone, so we'll just double tap. It should open the control center. It will now tell you at the top that it was activated. So if I'll double tap again and it says double tap detected also during setup, if you're setting up an iPhone for the first time, there's a new screen that allows you to change the age range so it can better sort of tailor everything to parental controls based on the age of the individual. So that's something you can see here. Also in Apple wallet, there's now support for my number cards in Japan. And if you're using mobile device management, it can now disallow Apple intelligence reports, Safari summarizations, mail, smart replies, idle reboot that will automatically restart the phone. If it was idle, you can also prevent the changing of messaging and calling apps and a nearby iPhone or iPad can now be used to sign into a Mac with an Apple account. Also within the code, there's a few different things worth mentioning. AI shows that Google Gemini could be coming in the next few weeks or some sort of AI update with Google instead of just chat GPT. Also code shows that the new emoji we've been waiting for should be coming in a future update that complies with the latest Unicode standard with things such as a harp and some other options and new languages are said to be added fairly soon as well. Again, based on the code, thanks to Aaron P 613 on X. So Bengali, Gujarati and many others. So those should be available hopefully in the near future if they're not showing already. Now, if you're outside the United States, you may have a few additional options for default apps. Thanks to Alessio for sending this in, but you can see default apps. This is in Belgium and he has an option for navigation. So you can switch between maps or something else and also for translation. So you can switch between different translation apps. We thought this was coming for some time and it looks like it's here. 
Hopefully they'll add that in the United States and other places as well. And if you have someone that's an unknown caller, you can report junk and then delete and report junk. So this is something people are seeing outside the United States or where it was supported before. I had someone in Belgium share this with me. The same is true in Safari. There's an update there if we go into Safari. And if you search for something such as Apple, it will now show suggestions where it didn't before. So search suggestions and history. So that's showing up in different countries, but it's only showing in English it seems so far. As far as anything else, well, I'm sure there's quite a few more features that we'll find over the next week or so. And I'll of course talk about that in a future update and iPhone 17 pro. I wanted to give a little bit of a hint. We'll talk about it in the weekly news update, but it looks like there's a new photo from Sonny Dixon showing off what the iPhone 17 pro and 17 pro max cases could look like. And it looks like it matches up to what John Prosser said. So the overall look is what we expected at this point with an all new camera tray at the back. So that's something that's a little bit different. When it comes to the overall experience, well, I've only used this for a couple days, but so far there are some lag or stutters and it definitely heats up. We'll take a look at that in a moment, but there's definitely lag and stutters from time to time, especially if you're using Apple intelligence, but generally it's pretty good. The wallpaper bug is still there. So if we swipe down, swipe back up, you'll see it resaturates. That's something that seems to be here permanently at this point. And sometimes the keyboard freezes. So if you're in notes, this is a new note on iOS 18.4 and it looks like it's okay, but sometimes it's sort of laggy, especially on older devices. I've personally experienced music stopping playing when I'm in CarPlay and Apple CarPlay in general, thankfully hasn't disconnected yet, but it does seem to be a bit buggy still. Sometimes that's due to low signal and I'm seeing that more and more where my signal isn't great. I only have one bar where oftentimes I'll have a couple more than that. So it seems a little odd. I don't know if this is due to the latest modem update, whether it could be due to, it could be due to your local towers and everything else. So at this point we don't really know, but it's definitely not as good for me. Performance wise, it's pretty good. It's very, very smooth. Many people have mentioned that as long as it's not lagging, everything seems to be smooth. ProMotion is ramping up quickly. Some people say it doesn't feel like 60 Hertz anymore and apps generally are fairly fast. However, when I was showing different things such as the type to Siri, my phone heated up quite a bit. So while it's performing okay, once you start using Apple intelligence features, it gets very, very hot. In fact, let me try that out and then I'll show you with the thermal camera. So we can go into Siri. We'll just type where it's sort of suggesting different things. I'll go into podcast, bring it up again. What can I do in podcasts? Maybe we'll go out again. We'll go back into the music and then again, play new music and it's heating up rapidly. So let me show you. You'll see if we look at the hottest point on the phone, we're almost well, 38.5 degrees Celsius or so. I saw it hit 40 earlier. So it's definitely about 10 degrees hotter than normal to the point where if you use Apple intelligence a lot, it slows the entire phone down. It becomes stuttery and laggy. So that's something they need to work out. As far as battery life, well, this is going to take again, some more time to measure, but if we go back, we'll go to the top and take a look. Battery health is at 100% with 132 cycles. And if we go back, it doesn't say that it's still processing in the background, but yesterday I only had two hours and 40 minutes of screen active time, 11 hours and three minutes of screen idle time and used about 75% of my battery. Today it's doing much better at two hours and 28 minutes of screen active time and I'm down to 70%. So it took a little while to process now that it has battery is significantly better. When it comes to benchmarks, well, again, it just stopped processing today. But if we take a look at the CPU history, I ran it multiple times and you get different results. The best I got today was 3,490 for single core, 8,598 for multi-core. Well within the margin of error, but not the best that I've seen, such as 8,700 or maybe even higher, 8,800 down here. And this was on February 10th on iOS 18.3.1. Typically the betas are a little bit lower than what we have with the public releases. So that doesn't really bother me, but it should improve over time. Of course, with newer betas, as far as when to expect iOS 18.4 beta two, well, we could see it as soon as this week, since we had some issues with it, maybe a beta one re-release and a public beta, or we might get a beta two, or it could be a couple weeks out. We don't really know at this point, but we do expect iOS 18.4 to release to the public sometime in April. So Apple's confirmed that at this point, and we're waiting for that release. Apple's also working on iOS 18.5 as shown by Mac rumors and their analytics. So that's something to look forward to as well. And maybe we'll finally get the updated Siri with context and more.
As far as the overall experience, well, let's take a look at some of your comments and see what you had to say. Anish Patel 3162 said iPhone 13 on iOS 18.4 beta battery capacity, 100% changed in the month of June, 2024. The update is fantastic. Super smooth animations, close to zero stutters. Just one thing I noticed is that the wallpapers of the previous version of iOS is not available. Some of them on Reddit have seen them in the update overall much better than expected. Clabton says, I'm still facing the issue where I don't have email sound notifications, only for Gmail. With Exchange accounts, I don't have this problem. It started with 18 versions and still remains. C. Schmitz 100 said, I've found iOS 18.4 beta 1 to be very buggy, way worse than iOS 18.3 betas. It's the little things, like I was in my notes, app typing, and my keyboard stopped working for a moment. Laggy at times. Isaac Man 1870 said, I'm using iOS 18.4 on my iPhone 13 Pro Max with 82% battery health. On February 22nd, yesterday, I had bad battery life, probably because it was finishing the update in the background. I saw the message. We'll see how it does today, February 23rd. I'm having a few bugs though. While in landscape, my connection control is bugged. It displays as if my phone was in portrait and my notification center is bugged. In landscape, I can't scroll down to view the rest of my notifications. I noticed that the focus control has little arrows next to the focus mode. I don't believe it was there before. I'm also having issues with RCS messages, sometimes not delivering, though turning airplane mode on and off again usually helps. I had this problem since the early iOS 18 betas. It even happened when I ran the public versions. 413X Record says, For me, iOS 18.4 feels more polished and smoother on my 10s Max than 18.3 ever did. Arafat Syed, K2P, said, iOS 18.4 Beta 1 on my iPhone 16 Pro Max has been really amazing. I haven't experienced any major bugs, just only a few minor bugs, and that's all. Battery life has been okay, but not the same as iOS 18.3.1. Surprisingly very stable for an early beta 1. Looking forward to beta 2 when that gets released. As far as storage, well, we are using a little bit more compared to what we had with Apple Intelligence on iOS 18.3.1. If we take a look at the storage, Apple Intelligence is using 7.05 gigabytes, where iOS is using 12.37 gigabytes for a total of 19.42 gigabytes. So it's definitely using about a gigabyte more or so. This isn't a huge deal if you like Apple Intelligence, but you can always turn it off and it will eventually delete itself if you don't want it. But overall, it's using quite a bit of storage this time around because of Apple Intelligence. So that's everything with iOS 18.4 beta one so far. Now, if you found any additional features or changes I haven't mentioned in the first what's new video or this video, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.